Welcome to Cardiac Delusions. Let's see our quote today. Give Evoprodine to a shocked patient to control the heart rate. Is that true or false? We have a 59-year-old male patient admitted to the CCU with a cardiogenic shock. His blood pressure was 70 over 50, anoric with cold extremities. He was started on IV dopamine as enotrope and noradrenaline as vasopressor and so blood pressure rise to 90 over 60 with warm extremity and he started to have urine output. The problem is that his heart rate was 130 beat per minute in sinus tachycardia and so one of the CCU residents won't start evaprazine to control his heart rate as he assumed that it would improve the diastolic filling and the myocardial perfusion. So is this practice true? or it is not accurate or it may be hazardous for the patient. We remember from previous videos the shock is defined as a clinical state of organ hyperperfusion caused by reduced systemic blood pressure and we know that the low blood pressure and hyperperfusion result in increased heart rate via homeostatic mechanism and this is called compensatory tachycardia because in the shocked state the stroke volume is reduced and so the increase in heart rate try to preserve the cardiac output for the longest time as much as a patient can do in order to protect the patient from hyperperfusion till the cause is corrected. That's why tachycardia is crucial as a compensatory mechanism in a shocked patient trying to preserve the cardiac output so it is essential to have tachycardia in the state. So back to our patient. What if we try to control the heart rate for this patient in order to prolong the diastole and so improve the diastolic filling and improve coronary perfusion? The cardiac muscle fibers have the beta adrenergic receptor which respond here to three powers. We have huge amount of catecholamines released from the adrenal medulla. We have also sympathetic stimulation which is heavily stimulated in this condition and also the doctors here are going to start IV inotropes in order to try to preserve the systemic vascular resistance. And so these three powers result in profound stimulation of beta receptor to result in positive chronotropic effect reflected as an increase in heart rate and positive enotropic effects. So if you think to give beta blockers or non-DHP calcium channel blockers to control the heart rate here it is absolutely wrong and dangerous because they can depress the blood pressure and the perfusion state and also reducing the heart rate which would compromise the cardiac output. We know of course that beta blockers and non-DHP calcium channel blockers are antihypertensive medications so here they are very dangerous to give in a shocked patient. What about evaprazine? It acts on the funny channels in the SA node without affecting the blood pressure. It is also wrong to give evaprazine in the state and this also applies to the digoxin. So why we don't suppose or favor them? Because here they are too weak to reduce the heart rate with all these opposing powers of catecholamines, sympathetic system and IV enotropes. To of course beta receptors would not respond to any control of heart rate via indirect mechanism. So we can conclude the funny channels and vagal stimulation will not help against the profound stimulation of the beta receptors so they are useless medications in this case. And as we also mentioned the compensatory tachycardia here is an important mechanism to like to preserve the cardiac output till you correct the cause of the shock. So this is our rule regarding the rate control. But is there an exception to perform rate control? In case of VT or rapid AF, they are adding to the hemodynamic compromise if they are not directly responsible for the shocked state. So here you need to give synchronized DC cardioversion to correct this hemodynamic compromise and then we may need to give amiodarone to maintain sinus rhythm and reduce recurrence. So this is an exception to perform break control because we are speaking here about malignant tachyarrhythmia that may result in a shocked state or add to the hyperperfusion state. But if we are speaking about just sinus tachycardia, no role for ray controlling medication. So what shall I do? I need to wean the IV supports as soon as possible to reduce their adverse effects and try to correct 
that causes shock, either cardiogenic, hypovolemic, septic shock, not just to look at rate control, because here it is a compensatory mechanism. You need to win the IV enotropes and try to correct the cause in order to oppose the catecholamines and thympacetic th stimulation. So what about this famous practice to give evapradine to a shocked patient to control the heart rate, assuming that it is not affecting the blood pressure, like beta blockers and calcium channel blockers? It is not accurate and evapradine is useless in a shock patient and as we learned today from this video that there is no role for ray controlling medication in shocked patients with sinus tachycardia unless there is evidence of clinically significant tachyarrhythmias that may contribute to hemodynamic compromise. Otherwise you need to wean the IV supports as soon as possible and try to search for the cause and correct it in order to antagonize the opposing factors that are causing the tachycardia. Thank you very much for watching this video and we are meeting next week in the next video of Cardiac Delusions.